So Guns of the Wasteland follows the adventures of uh, three people. Percy Murat, who is a, a young, naive 14-year-old that leaves home to find out what happened to his father. Gary Wayne and Boris, who are two deputies of Sheriff Artist Drake, clearly the King Arthur character, uh, as they go about trying to get revenge for the uh, Lancelot character, Lancaster's murder of Gary Wayne's younger brother, and um, Red Martin, who is a Native American from the Atacota tribe, which is a, a made-up tribe that's named after a, a tribe of Celts in ancient England. And so these three stories kind of progress separate of each other. There's also the story of Reverend Merle Tallison, who's the Merlin character, who believes that God has quit talking to him because of something horrible he did in the Civil War. And all of these stories kind of intertwine with each other, run parallel to each other uh, throughout the first three books. And then in the fourth book, they start becoming even more intertwined, uh, all leading up to what will be the, the big gunfight, which will be based on Arthur's last battle in La Morte Arthur. Um, all together, the four books work as a retelling of not only La Morte to Arthur by Thomas Mallory, but uh, Wolfram von Eschenbach's uh, Parsifal and uh, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. So. Deciding which aspects of the Arthurian myth I was going to include, because even though I said that it's a retelling of La Morte to Arthur, La Morte to Arthur is you know, that thick. All four volumes of Guns of the Wasteland are about that thick, and those are then they're incorporating Lamort to Arthur, Parsifal, and Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. So deciding which aspects of Lamort to Arthur I was going to incorporate, how I was going to imply the parts I was leaving out, which aspects of Parsifal, what to do with the entire second book of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, which is mind-numbingly boring, and then figuring out how to make it sound like its own story and not a retelling. I wanted it to stand, al to stand alone as its own story. I didn't want you to have to know these original texts in, in order to appreciate it. What I wanted was sort of like Easter eggs for people that might know the original text to go, oh yeah, I see what he did there. But the, for people who aren't familiar with them to just enjoy it as a story by itself. Ian McShane, who plays elsewhere in Shannon Death Deadwood, would be ideal to play uh, Caleb. Percy, I could see as being played by uh, maybe Finn Wolfhart from uh, Stranger Things and It. Lou Diamond Phillips could play Red Martin. I could see Ian McKellen playing Merle, because he's an older guy, who's actually inspired by Richard Monaco. When I started this project, I would have said the first book is absolutely the hardest book to write. But now that I'm finishing up the last book, I have to say the last book is actually the hardest to write, especially when you write the way I do, which is I don't do a whole lot of outlining when I start. I just start writing. When I was writing the first book, it was hard for me because I didn't know where it was going. But the further I got along, the easier it got. The easiest book to write, I think, were the, the middle two books because I didn't have to worry about setting up the story and I didn't have to worry about ending the story. I just had to figure out where is this volume gonna end. This last story, though, because I didn't really do a whole lot of planning on the outset, I find myself having to go back and forth between the first book and this one to see which plot lines I still have to tie up. So yeah, it's the hardest book so far has been the last book because I have to make sure that everything is tied up nicely. It's, a ma it's how I imagine screenwriters feel about writing the last season of a TV series when they know it's the last season. <laughs>